All right, Die Hard fans. Can we give it up for Showgirls for a moment? It was remarkable to, um, to feel the beats of that film uh, without people needing to laugh at every single line. Uh, there's going to be people who will always do that with the movie because it's become part of their lives. Um, but what I've always found curious is that um, if the movie is so ridiculous, then the gang rape scene, it doesn't fit. And when you talk to a lot of fans of the movie and when you see it at the Peaches screenings, uh, people try to laugh and, and make jokes about the gang rape and it doesn't work because in fact the tone of the movie is not accidental. And uh, it was beautiful to hear the weight of that sequence and then the rest of the movie. Um, it's building up towards something like that. So what we're doing tonight Come on in, you guys, all the way out there. It's fun to um, take over a, a movie theater that used to be a porn theater. Um, it used to uh, play pretty much every single kind of genre over these, these past 80 years. I find Showgirls to be a lot like a movie called Babyface, a uh, pre-code movie that in fact was disgusting for many audiences in the 1930s. And it takes time for people to look back on it. In fact, Babyface was censored for over 70 years to be able to, to hear what the movie was trying to really talk about. Now, getting to see The Fourth Man tonight is extremely special. This is completely out of pocket by myself. We're not supposed to be screening this movie. Uh, there's no copyright laws. They're um, here in the US. So, um, please don't tell anyone <laughs> that this is happening. Uh, but it's made, it's made for the type of maniac that um, many of you are. I know you come out uh, consistently, a bunch of you, to these types of screenings. Those of you that can't come out, I know that you, you watch movies uh, day and night. Um, you wake up in the morning to, to try to explore not just a filmmaker, but maybe the, the history of film. You've got your whole lives to do it, and when a special experience like this happens, that's um, why I would go out of my way to, to try and play the fourth man. I've never seen this in 35 millimeter in a movie theater, and what better weekend to do it. Now, as I said, the fourth man is um, sort of the basic instinct of the Netherlands, basic instinct of Paul Verhoeven before he came to the States, and I've always thought of Paul Verhoeven much like Fritz Long, uh, who worked in Germany making um, perhaps some of the most important films of his time, in Germany's time, and uh, when fascism started to kick into gear, he saw it and decided to leave his own country. And he came over to the United States where he decided, or had to, start making genre films. And genre films have never been respected. I don't care how many Quentin Tarantinos there are. Uh, the new genre films will be laughed at until 20 or 30 later, years later. One of you, hopefully, will, will be able to sum up Paul Verhoeven's career in your new script or your new film, and then you'll win the Academy Award, not pro Paul Verhoeven. So to get to see this movie tonight, um, it is extremely surreal. It is an art film. This is how it was uh, released in the United States, at least in 1983. Did anyone see this movie in the theater? We're all fourth men virgins. Uh, you have noticed perhaps this past couple of nights that Paul Verhoeven will use a lot of the similar actors. We saw in Total Recall, Robocop, and most definitely tomorrow in Starship Troopers. But tonight, uh, for those of you that are going to come tomorrow for Spetters, uh, you're going to get a handful of Dutch actors that he worked with consistently. Um, I don't want to spoil anything about this movie. This weekend is a continuation of what hopefully 2017 can help you with. Um, for Spike Lee's 60th birthday in March, we're gonna have a Spike Lee weekend here at Midnight's for Maniacs celebrating movies like uh, Bamboozled, Malcolm X, um, Crooklyn, and uh, I, I feel that Spike Lee is another filmmaker that just keeps making hit the movies he needs to make 
And um, if people pay attention to them or they understand them or not, it's not going to stop him. And hopefully that's the same kind of movie viewer you are going to be. It doesn't matter if people laugh at what you are enjoying or um, wasting your money on, because it isn't. And um, 15 years of doing this film series, uh, I've been teaching now for uh, 11 years, and um, it's only through watching movies after midnight that I feel like I have uh, reached the type of excitement and enjoyment about movies. So it means a lot that you guys are all here. Um, can we give it up for Carl one more time, who's projecting? And he's a real maniac, right? He, he really does only watch movies in 35 millimeter. Uh, and, and that type of passion is just beautiful to me. So a uh, couple trailers to get you into the mood here of The Fourth Man. And I look forward to hopefully seeing some of you tomorrow or next Wednesday for What's Up Doc and Noise.